Dr Deputy Quinlevin, if you'd propose uh, the adjournment of the debate so oh, that we can perfect, take these yeah. questions. Um, thank you, uh, As has been said before, this is a very unusual bill for very unusual times. And before I go into the comments I want to make, and the comments I'm going to make are mostly about business and how it affect business, I want to highlight the fact that you know, what Brexit is about mostly is about people. Um, I'm married to an English woman. My in-laws are English. Uh, my uncle lives in England. I have first cousins and second cousins. Some of them consider themselves Irish. Some of them consider themselves English. So it's a huge problem. I think there's every, almost every family in Ireland has some sort of connection to England. But the government um, is, is vitally important to put in place contingencies to protect Irish businesses and people's jobs in the event of a no-deal Brexit. Therefore, I do welcome the provisions contained in the Business Enterprise Innovation section of the Bill, which aims primarily to give Enterprise Ireland more powers to assist Irish businesses exposed to the consequences Brexit will bring. I agree with what my colleagues have said about the timing of this Bill. We would prefer the Government to bring forward this Bill at an earlier stage. Given its significance, ensure there was ample time to scrutinise it and bring forward amendments where necessary. It is a truly farcical situation we now find ourselves preparing for a hard Brexit. Almost three years after the referendum vote, British politicians can't agree on a plan to manage their orderly withdrawal from the EU, while most outside onlookers are none the wiser of what's to come. Unfortunately, their form in this area would not inspire confidence. Using Britain's colonial history of withdrawal as an example, departure would probably take far too long. Considerable damage would be caused along the way, and the possibility remains that they might not leave at all, as we in Ireland know only too well. It has taken an enormous amount of time for many in Westminster to realise they can't have their cake and eat it. The failure of politicians in England to take account of the economic reality or social upheaval Brexit is now coming home to roost for them. Unfortunately, it won't be an investment-owned funding, Jacob Riggs, Mark, or the Eaton educated Boris Johnson that will suffer as a result of a chaotic Brexit. It will be ordinary workers and their families that will suffer. As for the north of Ireland, the Tories have shown nothing but utter contempt for our citizens living there. It did, in fact, the one iota in the referendum campaign. The government in England has now completely ignored the democratic decision of the people in the North who voted to remain in the EU, and their attempts to scrap the backstop highlights a very worrying disregard for our peace process and the Good Friday Agreement. The British have no interest in the development and enrichment of the North of Ireland or the people living there, and they never had. As Patrick Keeldy articulated it in, recently in the Guardian article, when the Conservatives say, say they care about the North of Ireland, they actually just mean the freehold. Like a stable block with planning permission, they know the extra square footage adds value, but they have no intention of actually developing it. Just as long as they can see from the big house, they are happy. And as for those who live in the stable, if Brexit has proved anything, it is that many tourists do not give a stuff about the people of the North of Ireland, not even the Unionists. So this is no surprise, as British interference in Irish affairs has always resulted in a terrible experience for our country and our people. The only good thing that, would come, that could come from Brexit is the possible acceleration of the holding of a referendum on the reunification of our country. Partition of this island has been an unmitigated disaster that has come at a huge cost, and that day that a foreign government have no hand, act or part in the government of Ireland would be a very welcome day for all of us. On this note, now is the time we need to start planning for what a united Ireland will look like. It's astonishing to think that the Department of Business holds absolutely no information or data whatsoever to relating to the unification of the Irish economy, considering we've had nearly 100 years of governance from the so-called Republican Party and questionably named United Ireland Party. I'm at a loss to understand how no one in the past 100 years has asked how the national question might benefit our economy and business. I've asked Minister Humphreys on numerous occasions to commission a report or set up a working group within her department to examine the challenges and opportunities a reunified Ireland and economy would bring to businesses north and south. Unfortunately, the Minister has steadfastly refused to do this. This is a great shame and a, a definite mistake in the long run. Whether we have a vote on reunification in the next 5, 10 or 15 years, now is the time to start planning for it, and I would ask Minister Humphreys to again consider this. In the short time I have left, I want to look at some of the provisions of the bill. Uh, VAT, the proposed change to the VAT rules on VAT payments for imports from the third countries is welcome. Currently, unless specifically excluded, VAT on third in country imports is payable at the point of entry. Um, however, for, for imports from EU states, this VAT is payable under the normal returns 
and every second month. As I'm running out of time here, I want to flag the issue that we are going to raise a number of amendments. First amendment would be to ask the Minister for Business for business and enterprise to undertake a review of the current Brexit business support schemes and examine why there has been such a low uptake of these supports and propose solutions as to how business can avail of these supports. The Second Amendment will seek to implement the provisions contained in Part 8 or Part 3 of the Business Enterprise Innovation Section, regardless of whether a hard Brexit takes place or not. I propose the, 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 the move to maximise state aid rules. I propose the adjournment. Thank you very much, and you live.